Joan is making plans for entertaining a few of her friends at a buffet supper, she asks advice well ahead of time. She has learned that what is correct in terms of etiquette is also highly practical and logical. So she asks what foods she should offer, how it should be served, and what preparation she should make for arranging a buffet supper table. On the evening of her party, just before her guests arrive, June has everything ready, but she needs help in actually setting the table. The buffet supper is a bit different from other meals in that it is served in the later evening when only a light meal is wanted. Chairs will not be needed at the table since the guests will eat informally, eating wherever they wish to seat themselves. A plain linen tablecloth is proper for this type of service. But it should be laid squarely and smoothly with the sides hanging evenly. For the care that is shown in entertaining guests is meant as a token of respect and friendliness. Precision and symmetry are as necessary in arranging a table as is the choice of the proper service and decorations. June wants candles on the table and has to be reminded that this type of candlestick would be good if she were using candles as the principal light for the supper. But since the candles are not to be the principal light, they should not be placed on the table at all. However, her centerpiece of fruits is a proper choice. It is attractive without being obtrusive, and it is not expensive but it should be placed exactly in the center of the table. June enjoys the compliment on her centerpiece, but she still has a problem before her in arranging the table so that her guests can serve themselves without getting in each other's way. The answer is simple. Place things around the table in the order in which each guest will help himself. First, the nap and forks. These should not be stacked, but laid out singly. Staggering the forks helps the guest to pick one up easily. Each rule of etiquette has a logical explanation of this kind. And what may seem to be a small detail is still a way of showing consideration for a guest. The same principle applies naturally in larger matters. The buffet supper as a whole is designed as a simple meal which can be eaten simply. Since the guests will carry their food to another room, the service is made as simple as possible. A single hot dish is offered and kept warm in a casserole. It may be a meat pie, macaroni and cheese, or whatever you prefer. It should be substantial, but it need not be expensive. The object is to offer your guests something fairly hearty, but still a food that doesn't require a knife or cutting for they will not be seated at a table. The same principle applies in offering a single cold dish, which is a balance for the hot dish. June has prepared individual salads, which can be placed on the same plate as the hot food and can also be eaten easily without awkwardness. The main dishes are spaced about the table so that each guest, as he goes around the table helping himself to each dish, will not be crowded but have ample room. The other foods may be placed conveniently between the main dishes. The rolls that June is serving are kept warm in a napkin, and they have already been buttered in the kitchen. In this way, the guest may put the roll on his plate and not be bothered with a bread and butter plate. The entire meal, except for the dessert and drink, is put on the single plate, even the relish, or hors d'oeuvres, celery, olives, radishes, pickles, and so forth. The dessert is served on separate plates, which have already been placed on the table. The offering of cake calls for another fork, and also in the serving for a cake knife and fork. The dessert forks are laid singly like the others. And now our table is completely set. June can be confident and proud of her arrangements. She has a pleasing and proper meal prepared for her guests. There is a hot casserole dish, hot buttered rolls, cold individual salads, relish. For dessert, there is cake. On the buffet are the drinks, milk and punch. For older people, there would be tea or coffee. 
The guests will help themselves from the tall pitchers. But now everything is ready, and we can be certain that each guest will be fully aware, not only of the food, but of the attractiveness and convenience of the table arrangement. The table arrangement will be seen in itself as a gesture of consideration for the guest. And here is the soul of etiquette, the proof of courtesy and friendliness.